Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're tackling a hard problem called separate squares 2. If you've ever dealt with geometry problems on leak code, you know they can get tricky when shapes start overlapping. This one is all about finding a precise dividing line in a messy pile of squares. It sounds complicated but we'll break it down into simple steps. Here's the setup. We are given a list of squares. Each square is defined by the x and y coordinates of its bottom left corner and a side length, let's call it L. The squares are all aligned with the axes. Our goal is to find the minimum y-coordinate for a horizontal line that splits the total covered area perfectly in half. So the area covered by squares above the line must equal the area covered by squares below the line. Now there's a huge catch here that changes everything. The squares can overlap. And crucially, if two squares cover the same spot, that area is only counted once. We are looking for the geometric union of these shapes. If we just summed up the area of each square individually, we'd get the wrong answer. This count only once rule is what makes this a hard problem and pushes us towards a specific type of solution. Let's look at a simple example to visualize this. We have two squares. One is at the origin, 0, 0, with size 1. The other is up at 2, 2, also size 1. Since they don't overlap, the total area is just 1 plus 1, which is 2. We need to find a line y so that the area below it is half of that total. So, 1. The first square goes from y equals 0 to y equals 1. If we place our line at y equals 1, we capture that entire first square, giving us an area of 1. That's exactly half the total. So our answer is 1.0. Just a quick heads up. We'll be walking through the solution using Python, but don't worry if that's not your main language. I'll be showing the full code for other popular languages like Java, C++ and JavaScript towards the end of the video. The logic remains exactly the same. So how do we solve this generally, especially with messy overlaps? The editorial suggests a scanning line approach combined with a segment tree. Imagine a horizontal line moving from the bottom of the plane to the top. As this line moves up, it passes through different squares. At any given moment, we need to know the total width of the shadow these squares cast on the x-axis. Since squares start and end at different heights, this active width changes. This is where the segment tree shines. It's a data structure that lets us efficiently handle intervals. When our scan line hits the bottom of a square, we add that square's x interval to our tree. When the line hits the top of a square, we remove that interval. The segment tree then tells us, in essentially instant time, exactly how much of the x-axis is currently covered by at least one square. Before we get into the code, let's talk about the real reason people fail at leak code. It's not because they can't reverse a linked list, it's because they break their daily streak. I built my daily to-do specifically to solve this. You can set solve daily leak code as a routine task. This means it reminds you to complete your routine tasks every day. It's a dedicated system to force you to be consistent which I also use to remind myself to upload these videos every day. If you're watching this channel you're trying to improve, so this tool makes sure you actually show up to do it. I also want to be 100% transparent about how this app will grow. I am an indie developer, not a big corporation. I will never take away a free feature you already use. Core features like repeating tasks remain free forever. However, as I add new server-heavy features, they will be part of the premium plan to help cover the costs of running the app. Also, the price of premium will go up every time I ship a major new feature, so the best time to get involved is right now, while it's early. Check it out at the link in the description. Okay, we've talked about the big picture and the logic, now let's see what this looks like as actual code. I'll put the full solution up on the screen first. And don't worry, after that, we'll walk through the most important sections together. Here is the full driver logic. I've written this part to connect the pieces. We start by gathering all the unique x coordinates to build our coordinate system. Then, we create events for every square. One event for the bottom edge where the square starts, and one for the top edge where it ends. We sort these events by height y. Then, we iterate through them. Between any two events, the width of our squares is constant. We calculate the area of these horizontal strips and sum them up to get the total area. Finally, we loop through our history of strips to find exactly where we cross the halfway mark. And here is the segment tree class itself exactly as provided in the editorial. This is a specialized tree. Each node tracks a count and a covered length. The XS list holds our sorted X coordinates, which lets us handle large coordinate values by compressing them. I'll break down how the update method works in the next slide because that's where the magic happens. Let's zoom in on the setup. The problem allows coordinates up to a billion. We obviously can't create an array with a billion slots. 
This is where coordinate compression comes in. We collect only the x coordinates that actually exist, the left and right edges of every square. We sort them and remove duplicates. These points define the atomic slices of our x axis. Our segment tree is built on top of these slices, not the raw coordinates. Inside the update function, we have this logic to calculate covered. It's quite clever. Count tells us how many active squares completely cover the current interval. If count is greater than zero, it doesn't matter if it's one square or 10 overlapping squares, the entire width of this interval is covered, so we just take the full width. But if count is zero, it means this specific node isn't fully blanketed. However, parts of it might be covered by smaller squares below it. So we sum up the coverage from its left and right children. This recursively bubbles up the correct total union width. After our sweep, we know the total area. Now we need to find the precise cut. We calculate our target, which is simply total area divided by two. We revisit our stored history of strips. For each strip, we check. If I add this strip's area, do I cross the target? If yes, the answer is inside this strip. Since the width is constant within the strip, we can just interpolate. We take the starting height of the strip, plus the remaining area we need, divided by the width of the strip. That gives us the exact floating point y. A couple of edge cases to consider. First, perfect overlaps. What if two squares are exactly on top of each other? Our logic handles this naturally. The count in our segment tree node would simply go to two, but since we check count greater than zero, the covered width remains the same. Second, precision. The problem asks for accuracy within 10 to the negative five. Standard floating point numbers in Python or Java have plenty of precision for this, so simple division works fine. So how fast is these solutions? The complexity is dominated by sorting the events and coordinates, which takes order n log n. The segment tree operations, updating and querying, also take log n time, and we do roughly two updates per square. So the total time complexity is big O of n log n. Space complexity is big O of n as we store a linear amount of coordinates and nodes in our tree. All right, that covers the main solution in Python. As promised, for those of you who code in other languages, I'm about to show the full solutions for Java, C++, and JavaScript. I won't be breaking these down, so just pause the video on your language of choice to check it out. All right, as promised, here is the full solution in Java. You can pause the video here to take a closer look at the implementation. Note the use of inner classes for the event and strip to keep things organized. Next up, here is the C++ version of the solution. Again, feel free to pause and review the code. We use a struct for the events and a vector of tuples for the history. And finally, here is the solution in JavaScript. Hopefully seeing it in a few different languages helps solidify the concepts. The logic is consistent across all of them. So let's wrap it up. We learned that when you have overlapping shapes and need the union area, the sweep line technique combined with a segment tree is your best friend. We also saw how coordinate compression lets us handle huge coordinates by focusing only on the points that matter. And finally, we saw a specific segment tree trick where we just check if the count is greater than zero to determine if an interval is covered. Also, if you're looking for even more leak code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leak Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems. So if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Hope this leak code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click. Maybe subscribe for more or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. If you want to support the channel, a few people have asked how I plan my solutions. I'm a big fan of sketching out the logic and data structures on a tablet before I code, it really helps. I've put affiliate links in the description to the tablet I use and a few other good options. Using those links doesn't cost you anything extra but really helps me out. Or, if you're feeling generous, there's always the boba fund. Keep coding and I'll catch you in the next one.